Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you're a new subscriber, I always urge you to benefit from the playlists. The Master's Voice has quite a lot of themes that I've been covering over the last few years and so there are playlists for just that reason to streamline a particular theme. Important themes here on the Master's Voice are the Russia and the China playlists, the Repentance playlist, the America Sin series, and the America series. That's where the sins of America are listed. And in the Sin series, which is separate, you can find all the things that the Lord Jesus Christ has revealed here are sins, things that are taken straight from the Bible, but things that have become quite normalized by today's culture all over the world. There is a general acceptance of things that the Lord absolutely outlaws that you cannot say you are a Christian and you practice these things, but generalized acceptance for sin has rolled out across the whole world. And so a lot of the people who walk in the Christian faith and who call themselves Christian and who actually may have belief in the Lord Jesus Christ are also similarly burdened and compromised with sin. And so the sin series and the repentance playlist are two very important playlists here on the master's voice prophecy blog. There have been quite a few developments that are taking place. And because most of the prophecies that I made in that area have been covered, um, at least two years in the past, I am not going to be putting any new written prophecies up in that vein. One of the ways that you can find out what is going on is that you can go to the master's voice prophecy blog community page. And the community page, unfortunately, can only be seen by those who are subscribers. So please in no way consider this any kind of pressure for you to subscribe to this channel. You do not need to be a subscriber to watch these videos. You do not need to be a subscriber to read the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. These are free resources that are being provided for you. This channel is not monetized. The only reason that I'm here is because the Lord says that his word must go out to this current generation because this current generation is the generation, whether they believe it or not, accept it or not, that will be impacted by these prophetic words that the Lord is sending forth into the earth at this time. And so you don't need to be a subscriber to know what's going on, but sometimes the updates that are coming along, I put pictures of the old prophecy so people can know this thing was said in 2021, this thing was prophesied in 2020, and now you're seeing it on TV in 2023. I put that on the community page. And to those who are subscribers, if you do not know where the community page is, all you have to do is either click the channel icon or click the name, and it's going to take you to the main dashboard. And then there you will see videos, you will see playlists, you will see other titles. And one of those titles is the word community. And when you click community, unfortunately, it doesn't have any calendarized scrolling. So you might have to scroll back a bit, but as you scroll back, you will find many interesting Christian teachings, prophetic teachings, and updates of the prophecies coming to pass. So today's prophecy was given to me by the Lord just yesterday. We've only just crossed over now in time. It is 1245 AM here in New York City, but I got this prophecy very, very early in the morning yesterday, October the 29th, 2023. And the title of the prophecy is The Woes of Mystery Babylon. So again, this prophecy is speaking about the United States, things that America will face in the future. And as I said in the introduction, we can already see quite a few things that were spoken about in 2019, 2020, 2021, and even some of them from 2022, such as the America having altercations with Syria. Right now, America and Syria and Iran are bombing one another back and forth. And so there are quite a few people all over the world, millions of people all over the world are watching this happen on TV now. And they are saying, oh my, where did this come from? Why this sudden escalation? And we just need peace. And why don't we understand one another? But to those who have been following this blog, to those who know that I have not been spending your time and spending my time telling you to buy Shiba Inu coin and telling you things like that, that God whispered in my ear that this year is your year, but telling you serious end times, prophetic truths, nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. I was prophesying these things and people were saying, well, we know these things already, but I was prophesying in detail and giving you the names of the countries. 
prophecies like the cockfight, that prophecy came from 2020, that Iran and America were going to not only have a war of words, but a war of something like two angry roosters scratching at each other. And I said that blood would be drawn. And now we see people bombing and counter bombing one another. Syria was mentioned. China was mentioned. And now CNN is bringing out magazine articles titled, Can America Fight a War on Three Fronts? And the answer is a resounding no. America cannot fight a war on three fronts. America cannot afford the altercations that are coming her way. America is doing exactly what the Lord God said she will do, which is put herself in the midst of severe problems because she is going to continue to repeat an old pattern of warfaring, intimidation, and aggression, and she is going to be unaware that the tide has changed. Does anybody remember the old prophecy from 2020 where I said that I saw all the nations gather together at some kind of soiree? I think that prophecy is called send for their flesh. And that prophecy was in three parts. And I saw a sort of soiree and all the fancy countries, the acceptable countries, basically those who are in the G20 and especially the G7 were gathered at a soiree and they were all in formal dinner dress. So the Germanys were there and the Frances were there and America was there and sitting at the bar apart from everyone else, kind of rejected, snubbed, were two dark haired men. And these men were representing Russia and China. And they were sitting at the bar while the fancy spotlight people were at the other part of the party, gathered together, sharing and talking. And America was getting tipsy and America was talking and talking and she was just the belle of the ball and all attention was on her. So she was surrounded by her friends, but sitting at the bar, rejected and outside of the circle of the accepted were two dark haired men Russia and China, and one of the men was drinking a little bit out of control. He was drinking out of control and he was extremely angry. And it was as if he wanted to storm the center of attention and cause a scene. But the other man representing Russia motioned to him and said, no, wait, observe. And he put a, friend, a hand on his friend's arm and that caused the man who was representing China to slow down his drinking, to calm himself. And what the Lord showed me in that vision is that the one known as China trusted the one known as Russia, that this one has a plan, that this one has timing. And so the two of them were watching the spotlight nations. This is basically all the nations that are in Europe, America's traditional allies, as well as the United States. And of course that would include Canada. And they were watching them and they were biding their time. These prophecies are at least four years old, and now we are living in the manifestation of them. And I have come in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ to tell you that I will continue prophesying because while we are looking at the old prophecies now becoming reality, I still have more to say about what is to come according to the Holy Spirit. The woes of mystery Babylon October 29th, 2003. And the Lord said, as I finished writing this prophecy, I said, Lord, is there anything that you would want to say? And he said, they have kindled a fire in my anger that will burn continually. Now the actual verse that he used for when God is talking, it is almost always scripture. You can always go back to the Bible. I've always said, that one of the ways you can test prophecy is actually just taking what is written on the master's voice prophecy blog and running it through Google. And you will find that a lot of the verbatim messages that the Lord gives the nations is straight out of scripture. And the majority of it I have found comes from the old Testament. The actual verse for what he said is for you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse four. And this basically means that you have made the Lord so angry that you have set something like an incinerator on in him. And now there is no method. There is no practice. This includes tears. This includes repentance that will cause that fire to go out. I have always said here that it needs to be understood that the only mercy that will be available is individual mercy 
personal mercy. You're praying for yourself. You're getting your life cleaned up before the Lord. You are convincing your husband with you or your children. You're speaking to them. You're remonstrating with them. You're leading them. You're encouraging them to come back to the Lord. The Lord has said, I am waiting for them to come to me and repent. It's important to repent. Repentance is not when you feel bad. Repentance is not when you hear the prophecies and you feel cut to the heart and then you think, oh no, she's right. I've done the Lord wrong. That is just the start of the process. You must actually go and dialogue with the Lord himself. You must take responsibility for the things that have separated you from God and you must apologize for them. You must say that you are sorry. There's no way that we in this victim loving culture can be so willing to say, oh, we're so sorry for this and give a general apology for that. But Jesus Christ, who has borne our sins on his cross, who has shed his blood to cover our iniquity, to provide a bridge and a pathway for us, fallen humanity, to come back to him. People feel bad about their sin, but they do not go about the process of repentance the right way. You can visit the repentance playlist. There's some very good videos there to get you started. Many people have been in Christianity and they've said, oh Lord, I repent, but the weight of their sin is still sitting on them because they have not repented correctly according to how the scriptures say we are to roll that weight away in the grace and willingness of God to forgive if we confess. So personal confession and personal repentance is very important. It's essential as you are listening to these prophecies. If you're about to start that God bless America flag waving, if my people, you are in the wrong spot for that because the Lord says that his anger has been switched on like a boiler that is going to boil and boil and boil and anger kindled and it will burn forever. I'm sure we all understand that forever is literally forever. So the Lord woke me up today talking about America as soon as I woke up and he gave me three major headings of what is to come. And if you have been listening to these prophecies for a long time, then nothing will be new. And he's told me when you wake up for the day, be sure to record all these things and make them known for they're coming to pass swiftly. Do not leave anything out. Be sure to tell them everything. And so the first heading that I'm going to speak about is called wealth and prosperity destroyed. The wealth of Babylon will be drained away as if locusts attacked it. All her resources will be reduced as if struck by a mysterious plague and the wealth of the nation will be dried up by the hand of the Lord. America's debt will skyrocket as she gets into wars of the future. Her precarious financial situation will be worsened and her people will become very poor. And so there is a pro- there is a prophecy from about mid-year last year. I think it would fall squarely in the middle of the year, maybe June or perhaps July, and it's called coming wage crisis. And in that prophecy, the Lord revealed that America is going to have a systemic crash. So the crash is going to be uniform across the whole country. There's no part of the country that's going to be like, whew, we missed that. And this crash will be so devastating that the Lord says that there are no living witnesses who have experienced such a terrible financial time. So there's nobody living, there's nobody living from the 1933 times, the, um, not the experts from that time. Um, America had a depression, I think in 1929. And then she also had a horrible one from 1931 all the way to 1933. And the Lord says that what is coming has not been seen in living memory. So it will be that bad and the people will be extremely poor. And this prophecy is also talking about times of famine, times of extreme hunger. It goes to the point of global. So the Lord is talking about comings of times that are straight out of Revelation chapter six, red horse, black horse, economic woes and downfall. The earth basically starving as food is struck, famine comes and people are losing their lives in terrible global situations. But God says that America's wealth is going to drain away as if locusts have eaten it up. And we all know that the locust is an extremely dreaded and hard to get rid of pest. 
When those things come upon the land, a lot of countries actually look at locusts in the biblical view. They see it as a plague. When locusts come, they are so incredibly destructive and they leave nothing in their wake. They can even eat up an orchid. They can eat up an orchard, sorry. And orchards, not just, you know, it's not just one or two trees. People are basically farming commercially and they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trees and they're growing their apples and they're growing their oranges. But when these pests come through, when these animals come through, they will basically leave trees stark. They destroy everything. They are a destroying type of animal. And God says, that's what it's going to be like when he squeezes up America's wealth. The nation is going to, to become poor almost overnight as if she's suffering from a plague. And part of her punishment will be that the national debt is going to go right to the moon because America is going to get into wars regardless of the fact that she cannot afford them. The present government is at present asking for over a hundred billion dollars to fund wars simply because they cannot understand that these are the times when the United States needs to minimize her footprint, but because her curse is to be blind and because America's curse is to misread the signs, to not see the writing on the wall, mene, mene, tekel ufarsen, then she's busy trying to print money that she's already not good for because she's broke and she has a ton of promissory notes and even half the money that America owes is being held by her enemies. People that she's always condemning in the news. They are the people that hold US IOUs. And every person who has minimal understanding of the financial situation in this country knows that what I am speaking is the truth. And yet your TV is telling you that we are about to set sail once more, expecting to go off to get Roman glory and come back. But the times have changed. People online are now asking very succinct questions like, why is America so far in the Middle East? It's very, very far from home, America. What are you doing there? And yet, because of pride and obstinacy, this nation will not hear and so we can expect to be poorer and we can expect to see that trillion counter go upward as America gets into debt for wars in future that she can't afford. And her shaky, her precarious, her rocky financial situation will only get worse. And the Lord says that it's the people who will pay the price. It's the people who will become extremely poor. And if anyone can remember, there was a prophecy that was called America will be like Zimbabwe part one, where I said that the dollar went away and money started to be just digitalized. And that digital money is not a flex. That digital money is not the sign that a country is becoming more AI friendly and more developed. They're actually getting rid of paper money as part of the way to limit freedom of people. It means you can't keep your money at home. It means that you can't do transactions off the books. Digital money means that everything is happening right before the eyes of the government and there's no more autonomy and there's no more privacy. And that is one of the most obvious steps that your government has become corrupt and you are on your way to an autocratic state. Another prophecy that you can look at is called systemic risk. It will all collapse where the Lord said, that the financial system of the USA is rotten all through and that every single tenet and aspect of this country will crash one day. Another prophecy that you can look at finance wise is called nothing but scattering. And that's about a 35 to 37 minute live prophecy call where I was on the line with people praying and the word of the Lord just began to pour forth. And part of the things that God was saying is that we have come to the time now where piggy banks will be broken said, we've come to the time now where older people will come out of retirement. They thought that they were done. They thought that they'd finally hit that 65 year cap. Now has it's been changed to 67 years old before you can retire and start to use your social security. People thought that they could retire, but he said that you'll see a lot of old people coming out of retirement and having to work. They will have to get first and even second jobs to make their ends meet because social security is not going to be able to compete with inflation. We're seeing all that and so 
the wealth of a nation. The Lord was explaining this to me. Please listen to the explanation that he gave. The wealth of a nation is its backbone. The wealth of a nation is its strength. That wealth is accumulated through trade. So that means import, export, things like that, your trade partners. Artisanal skill, that means people who can actually create goods for sale. Having a manufacturing economy and having things like that, goods and services existing. Private enterprise, this means that this is not public enterprise. Like when the government is funding something, this is actually having businesses, good, strong businesses in a country build a strong economy. The private sector is extremely important. The educational system, the quality of the workforce. So is there a good and strong educational system? Is it turning out functional graduates? Is it turning out high quality people from the schools? Or are we getting the kind of people that we are getting from the schools? And then they are coming out. They're not as skilled as generations before them. And then they can't even find jobs to do. They're being gaslit and they're being told the economy is so strong. And all these kids are doing is having to go and take Starbucks barista jobs and things like that. There's not good, decent jobs with good, decent perks available for the workforce that is managing to graduate. The quality of the workforce, the birth rates are enough babies being born to replace the work, the workforce in a few decades, or is it that people are aging out of the system and you're not getting enough kids being born to replace them? So God says that national wealth is built from all these factors. When ancient cities like Timbuktu, Rome, and Cairo in Egypt were as strong as they were, when they were at the height of their power, they were trading with everyone in the known world. And that's because they were all famous for something. Timbuktu was famous as a learning center. So was Babylon where they had the hanging gardens. They were famous, famous either for education, they were famous for war. That's definitely what Rome and also Egypt, one of the things that Egypt was famous for, they were famous for textiles. They were famous because they had wisdom or because they were beautiful in the arts. But he said that something always set them apart and caused their economies to boom. But once judgment is pronounced against the nation from the Lord, then even factors that seem unrelated will gel together at once and it can create unfortunate circumstances that will lead to an overnight decline. The best example of what I just said that you can study in the Bible is what happened to ancient Egypt when God judged them after he was getting ready to bring Israel out of slavery. So the word here is Haggai chapter one, verses five to six. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much, but you bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put them into a bag of holes. This is a message of futility. This Bible verse that you have just heard me read. Because what God is basically saying, consider your ways. He means actually take a step, move back, and look at the math equation. You're doing two plus two, but you're getting zero. You're doing six plus six, but you're getting one. You're basically putting in so much. You're sowing, but you're not reaping as you should. The fields are not giving you back what you should expect. He says you eat, you do have food on the plate, but you are not full. Meaning that you either can't afford enough to keep the plate as full as you were before, or perhaps the quality of the food that you eat is not as filling as it was before. And to a nation that's consuming so much GMO and they're hiding it from us and it's not even labeled because there's no law forcing food producers to label the food. They're merely doing it at a, as a courtesy at this rate. Then is it any wonder that the Bible will say, even when you eat, you're not full. He says you drink, but you're not filled with drink. You're clothing yourselves, but you're still shivering because you're not warm. And even though you're working and you're earning wages, it seems as if you're earning that money and putting it into a bag that has holes. What is God saying? This is a picture of God being your enemy, saying you will work hard, but you will not see where it's going because I will consume it all away from you. The produce of the nation, this is back to the prophetic word, the produce of the nation especially will come under attack. 
U.S. food production is at an all-time low, but it is about to go even lower. It has reached crisis levels and will go beyond it. There will be no grain production in the USA because of low agricultural output. America's food production will fail to the point that soon hunger and famine will spread to every household if I, the Lord, allow it. If I do not stand in the gap to preserve a remnant, then every household would be affected by starvation. But I have my remnant alive at this time, and my plan is to provide for them unless all flesh would perish. This section of the prophecy is backed up because multiple times I have said that there will be a failure of the food stores in this country. You can look at this prophecy speaking about how God says that an engineered food crisis will come. They're going to basically destroy the food. They're going to destroy the animal stores. They're going to destroy the farms. They're going to mess up as much as they can internally. We have since last year been watching poultry farms and poultry storages burn down. We've been watching grain silos burn down. We've been watching places where food is supposed to be stocked up for at least six months in advance burn down. And it's always an accident. And the police and the FBI are always investigating. But guess what? Once those things burn down, it is extremely difficult to build back up within a short space of time. If you burn down six months to a year's worth of grain, if you burn up all the farms and things like that, you can investigate all you want, but those things are still missing. And eventually the gaps will reach a critical tipping point. And then the lack of those things will be felt where? At the cash register. And when we start to look at emptier and emptier shelves. And the verse that the Lord gave me when he's talking about all flesh would perish unless he preserves a remnant is from Genesis chapter six. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So the Lord gave forth this verse to show that just as he says that hunger and famine is going to hit every household. If he were to allow it, he was telling Noah, I'm going to make an exception of you and I'm pulling you out of the mass of those that I have judged. So make yourself a boat because the end of all flesh alive at this time, meaning their last bus stop, I'm not letting them go any further. I've been watching these people and I've been giving them chances and I've been having you build and I've been having you build this boat, but now the end of all of this, their extreme wickedness and the violence that they have filled the earth with, it has come up before me. And so now, Noah, I've come to give instructions that is going to take my decision and my judgment in a different way. So God is saying to those who are righteous that he will make provision for you. I do have my remnant alive at this time. God knows the names of his people. The problem that I have always been trying to get the people to understand is that you cannot be producing salt and sweet in your life and claim that you are the righteous. This is mass confusion that is in the church. The people of God know their God. They love him. It would never be in their heart to argue for Illuminati superstars. If that is what comes out of your mouth when you hear the judgment of these people, you are confused and you are not the righteous. Because when the righteous hear that God is angry about certain things, their heart is pricked for his sake. Their heart is not pricked for Beyonce's sake. Their heart is not pricked for T.D. Jake's sake. Their heart is not pricked for wolves in the church sake. sake. Their hearts are pricked that their God is upset. They are moved for their God. They care about his side. That is what the righteous do. So once you have that half and half split down the middle, these, this is not talking to you until you make the shift from where you are into where God wants the righteous to be. The righteous have what the Bible calls an affectation. It is a posture. It is a position. It is a placement that people have when they love God. And it's impossible to fake it. You know if you have it and you know those who don't have it. 
Light and dark cannot mix. Salt and sweet will just never flow from the same stream. We are in this world, but we are not of it. So there is no way you can fool all the people all the time, but you can never fool the Holy Spirit about a posture of righteousness. And that is because righteousness does not come from within us. It is actually granted to us by the Lord himself entering in and dwelling with us. You can never claim righteousness if you don't have it. That is only deception. And the only people that it can fool are those who lack discernment. If you know, you know. And likewise, if you are a tear, you may be deceived, but most tears know who they are because once they hear their description, the next thing that's coming is offense. These promises are for the righteous, the people who are getting their households in order. Noah didn't sit and say, you know, God, that's, that's very interesting. Do say more. Noah listened to God with his whole heart and he was obedient to the vision that was handed to him. God wouldn't tell Noah, I've made a decision to destroy these people. And then Noah starts saying, but are you sure this is going to happen? God, let me test your spirit. He didn't say that. He heard the word and the word was mixed with faith in him. And Noah proved himself a man of faith because he moved into holy action and he built that boat and he was blessed by his own obedience, him and all his family members and all the animals who were saved because he did not sit. He did not wait to see if it would happen first. What a terrible time to build a boat when the skies open and the fountains of the deep are broken up, as the scriptures say. What a terrible time to start looking for the lions and the lambs, to put them on a boat that does not exist. What a pity to wait until a calamity and a destruction is upon you, and then you begin to move with holy fear. That's not holy fear at all. That's monkey see, monkey do. And that's monkey drown because it's too late. It is way too late to believe when a distress is upon you, when a woe is pronounced. A woe is a judgment in biblical terms. A woe means that it's too late. Hearing it, you hear it now, but we are watching towards the future when the words spoken now are going to unfold, just like the words spoken then are unfolding right now. So if you want to know more about prophecies where God says that the grain will finish, because the Lord did say that a grain will finish, you can look at this prophecy that is called a vision of America. That is the first prophecy I got, I think in 2021, where I saw that America is going to become a highly, highly monitored military state they're going to send out the cops in black, the ones that I'm always talking about with the helmet. I think that was one of the oldest prophecies where I saw them. And when people keep protesting in those days, those cops are going to come out and beat people to within an inch of their life. Those are not people who are going to be having this. It's my right to record you, officer. There will be none of that. They will break your arm, break the, ca um, the camera, break everything that they can. I saw that they were very hands-on cops. They were not much for conversation. They would beat people who gather to protest the extremely controlling laws of that future time. And another thing that I saw is that bread was just basically an entity. What we lost is we lost bread, we lost oil, we lost sugar. And I saw that the fast food industry suffered so hard and America was groaning. America had a, a whale, basically. It started as a low groan because the nation was feeling hunger for the first time for the first time, real hunger because there was no bread. That means that burgers, pizza, hot dogs, tacos, all the stuff, all the bread-based dependencies that this nation has, all the sugar-based dependency, all the Mountain Dew and the Coca-Cola, it went away and people were forced into a hard detox. And I'm telling you, people were crying because of their cravings. And then after that, they were just crying because they were so hungry. America became a black market economy. That prophecy is 2021. And then I think it was either this year, the prophecy came from the Lord where he said, America will be like Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe is 100% a black market economy. A black market economy means that the government says that, oh, the exchange rate is 40. And the black market says the exchange rate is 140. 
the black market actually keeps up with the real world. And then the government maintains a fake fantasy economy. That is what it, what it means to have a black market economy. In a black market economy, connections are very important. If you need sugar in your house, then you have to know the chief of imports or you have to know the chief of supermarkets or whatever they will be called in those days. You have to know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy to get the sugar, to get the salt. Butter and things like that will be luxuries in the future. And if you don't have the connection, then you will not have access to those things. So I continue. There will be global hunger and worldwide famine, several million put to death by disease, and another several million who will die because of the breakdown in services that make essential help not available when it's needed. People will die of this in all nations. And so a prophecy that I recently brought just a few months ago is one of those Obama prophecies, and it's called Worse Than 2008 Part 3. And when I was sleeping, the title of the prophecy, which I had not even yet heard from the Lord, was repeating in my sleep, worse than 2008, part three. And then he would deliver, deliver, deliver a portion of the prophecy. And then again, in the dream, I would hear the announcement, worse than 2008, part three. And in that dream, emergency services were destroyed in the United States. The people who come and they get your cat out of a tree, the people who come and they save you when the building is on fire, FEMA and the National Guard and the police and 911, all those services broke down because America was just a hellhole. The country had gone into complete near total collapse. And I mean, there must have been still power because you could still call. But when you called, I saw in that dream that no human would answer you. No one was at work. No one was maintaining um, social services and no one was maintaining the police and the fire department anymore. And so you would call and that recording would answer you. No one would say 911, what's your emergency? And I heard terrible things in my dream. I heard people saying that their children had fallen into wells. I heard people saying that, um, due to perhaps a natural disaster or storm or something like that, tree branches, heavy tree branches or a tree had fallen on their husband and he was pinned under the tree, maybe bleeding from his mouth and they were weeping and sometimes screaming on the call and saying, I need emergency services. And there was no one. And I heard a harrowing one because, um, I saw in my dream, the Lord said that sometimes they will call frantic, but sometimes they will call and they will have a flat affectation, which just means a flat and a dead tone because it will be too late. They will no longer have an emergency. They will just need aftercare help. And I heard a woman saying that we had a terrible flood and in her home, the door had gotten jammed and her baby in the next room drowned. And so she just said, my baby is dead. My baby is dead. Can somebody help me? Can anybody come? I can't get the door open. And so that is the kind of thing that will happen when there is breakdown in essential services. Essential services basically means that your hospitals are overwhelmed, not by COVID this time, but by this thing that God says is coming, Marburg virus. That Marburg virus is going to start burning all over the world. This disease is akin to Ebola, highly infectious and just runs through the human body and puts people to death very quickly. I saw that in the prophecy from... 2022, and it is called the Black Horse. That prophecy is about the coming of terrible diseases that will take millions and millions of people away, exactly as the Lord says, several million put to death by disease. This is the book of Revelation that I'm reading out. The only difference is Revelation will give you one sentence, but the Holy Spirit will give the Master's Voice Prophecy blog succinct, step-by-step -step detail of what is ahead. And all of this is not to monger any fear, but it is to let the human being know that we are going into waters that no human being can swim alone. You will need Jesus as the rescue boat. boat. You will need Jesus as the captain in the boat to manage these times. Global hunger and worldwide famine, no essential services and disease will put millions and millions of people to death. The Lord says people will die of this. Just these four that I'm talking about in all nations. 
And here's the explanation that he gave. Global hunger and famine aren't things that can be easily dealt with. The Lord says that very few countries have the financial reserves that are necessary to be able to buy food for their entire population if the crops fail, if there's natural disasters, if the wheat that they're depending on doesn't come in, if the corn that they're depending in, the soy, if there's not enough trade, if there's war in the region, you won't be able to, to afford food for the entire population if there are low food stores. He says that very few countries have the financial reserves enough money on the books to deal with the outcome of natural disasters that may destroy the means of farming. Adverse market forces can also destroy a nation's prosperity overnight. What does that mean? That means if you're a country that gets sanctions put on you, if you're a country that your, your currency crashes, when the United States currency crashes, when the dollar is no longer just being challenged by the BRICS nations, but the dollar actually crashes. Many countries are going down with the dollar. I brought the prophecy here. It is called nothing but scattering from last year. And the Lord says that the EU countries are all going to go down to their knees when America falls. She's taking every single person who's tightly knit, tightly knit with her in the financial world down. So every single country that is dependent upon the US dollar. And one of those countries that God mentioned by name is the nation of Zimbabwe. That nation is fully dependent on the U.S. dollar. He said that if U.S. dollars are fully integrated or too integrated into your economy, when that money crashes, that country, wherever that country is, and he spoke to the entire EU and he said, you are going down when America goes down. Also, he said that even if food or other aid is going to be provided by other nations, even if other countries bring you the food, so you may not be able to afford the food and then there's humanitarian aid and they bring you the food, they bring you the water, they bring you the medicine and the rations. He said that very few nations can handle the logistics of mass shipping and mass transportation of food and basic resources to all areas of their country, especially to where famine and hunger is most severe or where relief is sorely needed. And one, one such example from history, I think from the 1920s, that the Lord brought up that was very harrowing, something I'd never heard of and seen before, is that famine that occurred in Russia in the 1920s that is referred to as the Holomodor. Um, that was a, a deliberately engineered famine. It was deliberately engineered, and Russia purposely did not give famine food relief to the worst hit areas. They were not able to do it, but they also just did not put any effort into getting food to those places. And it was in those places that people became so desperate to save their lives that they basically ate human flesh. They ate people. They basically ate the people who died. They also committed murder and ate people like that. And the Lord said that that same punishment is going to come upon the United States. And what he said is that it also has not been seen in living memory. And that is also pure prophetic truth because nobody is alive from those times to testify to it. And so if it happens again, correction, when it happens again in modern times, it would be something that has not been seen in living memory. The next part is a scattering is coming. They will be scattered to the four corners and the land will be left desolate. They will be removed from their heritage and taken to a place far away, far beyond their own borders. The destinations will be as diverse as they are. Americans will go by their own free will and also by means of captivity to all the borders of the world. At that time, there will be those who take advantage of the instability of war to increase human trafficking. This practice of stealing and selling people is about to get more explosive than it's ever been, especially when war breaks out across the whole earth. So this scattering, basically when people are forced to leave their home, when people are forced to flee, when people are forced 
through circumstances that are absolutely out of their control to run away from their home. In the Bible, the Lord refers to it as you will remove, you will remove from your inheritance. So in the old days, people strongly, strongly cared about their land. They strongly cared about their national borders, just the same as now. But in those days, it was almost a matter of life and death. And that's because those are the days that nations were birthing and establishing themselves. And so to be told in a prophecy that you will remove you from your inheritance, I will cross you over your borders. When the Lord used to judge Israel like that, these pu punishments would happen publicly and the eyes of all the other nations would be on them. This was a terrible shame. And these kinds of punishments, it's not everybody like Daniel and his friends who would make it alive at the place where they were going. These were hundreds and hundreds of miles of trekking. Remember the invaders would come walking, but they would come walking at their own pace. They would come with horses and wagons and things like that. But as they're taking captives, many, many people would lose their lives along the way. And so this was a terrible type of judgment. And God is saying, and I have been saying it here for years, if time allows, I will play some clips from previous years, 2022, when the Lord kept bringing this thing back that a, a war is surely coming to America. So here is the thing. How many times have you heard this? And in your heart, is there actually crystallized faith that you have heard this thing, that you have taken this matter to the Lord, that he has brought it up in your own prayer time, just in case you were pushing it to the back of your mind. How many people have taken the next step? Like Noah, I have heard, but now there must be the building of some type of boat. There must be some type of movement with holy fear. Holy fear means that you have not just listened to Jesus the way you would listen to a news report, the way you would listen to a podcast that's saying, hey man, I don't know, man, it's looking like civil war, man, but you have actually heard the Lord speaking either in your personal prayer time apart from here, or you have heard this thing, this matter has been established by the Lord America, the judgment against you is thus. You have caused women to go into early labor because of the shock of seeing your soldiers and your tank and your in tanks and your incredible war machine coming over the hill, over the horizon. And those are the lucky people. Those are the lucky people who were woken up by American ground forces. The unlucky people were woken up by cluster bombs they were woken up by drone rocket attacks. They were woken up by shock and awe. And when they lost their lives in the 10.5 seconds in between sleep and waking up and being bombed into oblivion, when they were spoken about later on U.S. soil, the only honorable mention that they had was to be called collateral damage collateral damage, the very term that we are hearing now in the news, history repeating itself. For the things that this nation has done, God says that you will not grow old in this nation and you will not have peace in this nation. And this is my assignment to establish it, to make sure that it is settled in the core, to make sure that it is understood that this is not a discussion point but this is a sure prophetic judgment that cannot be shifted. And so it must be prepared for. If you cannot shift a thing, then you must prepare for it. They will be removed from their heritage and they will be taken to a place far away, far from their own borders. And the destinations that they go to will be as diverse as they are. What does this mean? Americans come in all backgrounds, all ethnicities of the world live here. And so God says the diaspora will be as diverse as the people who live here. You have Irish ancestry. It's right back to Ireland or somewhere in the UK you're going. You're British, you know where you're going. You're French, you know exactly where you're going. You're African, you're heading right back there. Because God says that he will trouble this land and this land will not know peace. And so the... The destinations will be diverse because the people living here will be diverse. And God says that we will see that people who are American born 
So this is not going back to Haiti or anything. You're actually born here and this is all you know. God says that you will still leave by your own free will. Americans will go by their free will, but they will also leave this place by means of captivity. People will be taken captive out of this country as judgment for the captivity of slavery of the African Americans and the Native Americans of the past. It will happen here. The captivity will also happen here because of the rampant sexual immorality that takes place in the United States. And God says at that time, basically when human flesh is being caught, so we're not talking about the people who will willingly go to different destinations or they will be driven there by war. That's another way that diaspora will happen. But when captivity is happening and when there's mass movements of people, people fleeing war or people just generally fleeing uncomfortable situations, persecution by the government is another reason that people are going to flee. I spoke of this when I was speaking about how uh, the face of America is going to basically change from the money that we've all traditionally known to this digital coin and everything. A lot of people will flee by land. A lot of people will run away and the government's going to basically plunder people's homes and take away everything. But God says in the mass movements of people, basically in the upheaval and the chaos, this is when human trafficking is going to come into its own. So people are already under duress. People are fleeing um, difficult circumstances. People are running from their homes. They already don't have enough. And then this is when the traffickers are going to rise up and become another torment, another thorn in the flesh. This practice of stealing and selling people will become more explosive than it's ever been. And this is opportunism. This is the wicked seeking an opportunity to prosper. And that is what Satan does. Don't underestimate the devil. Don't ever think he's kicked me five times. It's enough. He can always get an eighth, a ninth, and a tenth kick in there because the devil is relentless. He is a spirit. He does not sleep. He doesn't take naps. He doesn't need food. He doesn't have feelings as we understand them. In the spiritual realm, it is a spiritual place where spiritual transactions happen. And this is why the Bible is always telling us not to be carnal, not to be fleshly, not to think that our emotions will run the show. Our spirit is what interacts in the spirit realm. That is where we meet and defeat the devil. We defeat him not with carnal weapons like complaining, bitterness, fear, anxiety. And what am I supposed to do next? We meet the threats by the rising up of the Holy Spirit in us, the stirring up of prayer, strengthening with fasting with holy songs of worship. It is spirit versus spirit, not spirit versus flesh. Opportunism will also cause harm in those days and it needs to be understood. And this is why vigilance needs to be practiced now. You're out in the street at night with earbuds in your ear because you think that you are immune to that white van with the door that just slides open slowly and the six men waiting in the door to take man or woman. They do not care. They will take men. I have warned the men many times. You will meet strange endings in these vans simply because men innately don't fear much when they're on the street at night. They're taking people in broad daylight right now. And so let us be wise. The verse is, through your own fault, you will lose the inheritance that I gave you. I will enslave you to your enemies in a land you do not know. For you have kindled my anger and it will burn forever. And this is Jeremiah 17. This is the verse I read at the opening, but the verse I read at the opening is Jeremiah 15. This one is Jeremiah 17, verse four. Another way that it is rendered is this, and you yourself will relinquish the inheritance that I gave you. I will enslave you to your enemies in a land that you do not know, for you have kindled, stirred up my anger, and it will burn forever. To hear God say that he will be angry at a nation forever, it is not a small thing. It almost sounds totally contrary to his character, but that is only if you do not understand the father's character. God is no friend of the wicked, no matter what the reckless love theology that you may have been sipping on until this day when you came to this video, no matter what it has told you, God is not the the friend of the wicked. He is angry with the wicked every day. The Lord cannot accept iniquity. And when iniquity has so many heads and so many arms and so many threads blended into one nation, 
You cannot expect endless tolerance from God forever, especially when he has showed mercy as much as he has to relinquish something. When he says you will relinquish the inheritance that I gave you, he's basically speaking of a picture where you have had something by reason of the fact that it's yours. So it was yours. It is something that you have held. It is your property. The word relinquish is a word that always carries connotations of defeat. Words have, in my life, I would just explain it as all words have a feeling. All words have a feeling around them. So you can not only learn the meaning of the word, but you can actually get the feeling. Is, is it a positive feeling word or negative feeling word? To relinquish always speaks of loss. It's not just, I give this up. It's, I give this up because I have no choice. I give this up because I am the weaker. I'm giving this up against my will. When you relinquish something, there's no picture like I hand this over or I gift it. You relinquish when you, when you file bankruptcy and they come after your properties and stuff like that. And they put you in curatorship. You're, you're basically letting go of your right to be an adult because you're basically admitting that you don't know how to manage finances. And so you relinquish the rights to manage your property, to manage everything and you are treated as a child. And so to relinquish your heritage basically means United States of America, you will let go of this land that we are all sitting on right now. The actual soil that is under your farmhouse, that is under your one bedroom, your studio, that is under your mansion, all these houses will sit here empty and the animals will come into the buildings and will walk around. I've covered these prophecies years ago, 2019, 2020 that God said, the animals will investigate the houses. They will be in your pleasant palaces. It will be the animals walking down Times Square, going into Carnegie Hall and things like that. To let go, to lose hold of, to reluctantly give up something, to forfeit what is your own because of compelling circumstances that leave you no choice but to let go. That is the word relinquish. The next part is Mexico and Canada. Hear the word of the Lord. You will not be innocent in this. You will not remain unscathed in this. When America's wars come, you will be caught in them and you will become her favorite phrase, collateral damage. You will become incidental to her suffering. The nature of war means that there are no clear cut boundaries in terms of hostilities or the movement of people. So there will be no way to contain America's war neatly within her borders and keep it solely as her problem. People will flood against the Canadian flood across the Canadian and the Mexican borders in an attempt to flee the American civil war. A refugee crisis will be seen in North and South America as U.S. citizens are displaced because of the upheavals coming to the United States, millions will flee anywhere they can, and foreigners will go back to their countries. The trickle of immigration now will become a flood, thus says the Lord. Mexico and Canada, you will be judged along with the United States for the same sins, the same immorality, the same evil doctrines, and the same demonic practices as the whore of Babylon. But your judgment will not be as fiery or as painful as the judgment of the United States. So I have spoken of Mexico and Canada before. The portion of prophecies that relate to Mexico, one of them is called Isaiah 13, Russia and war. And in that prophecy, one of the things that God was saying is that People will run away to Mexico and the border wall that has been such a source of pride during one administration, the Trump administration, and then such a, a, a source of contention and arguing in the second administration, the Biden administration, the Lord has only one thing to say about that wall. And he says that you're building that wall and it's going to be your trap. You're building the wall. It's going to hold you in. When you're ready to run away, 
citizens of America. It will be that very wall that will prove to be such a bitter frustration to you. And he said, you built the wall to resist the Mexicans, to keep them out and to deny them entry into a place that if I must tell you, God has always says that this place belongs to those people because it was theirs in the first place. It was theirs in the first place. These are just some of the things that the Lord tells me. And I put them in my notes just for understanding. He would always say to me, why are they angry? This place belongs to those people. He calls it Mesquite country. And I had to go and look it up. And it's that bushy, thorny shrub that you found all the way down there in Texas and those places. That thorny, M-E-S-Q-U-I-T-E. That's what he calls it. Mesquite country. And so, the same thing that America was trying to do basically to keep South Americans out, the Lord says that you will be running back in the other direction. And I'm sure it has been heard from the prophecy that is called the iron pen. And I think that prophecy is from September, 2023, where the Lord was again reiterating that there will be mass emigration, not immigration, emigration to exit a nation, mass emigration to South America. And he said that though South America is brown now, it will be white because of the mass flow of U.S. citizens going to sit there and hide there away from their own civil war. And so God says that Canada and Mexico and basically South American nations, that you're going to become collateral damage, which means you're just going to be side sufferers because of America suffering her problems. And because when a civil war breaks out, or just other dangerous things. You can't neatly draw a border around a country and say, well, that's just for you and don't enter Canadian ter territory and let's not catch you crossing into Mexico. These things spill over. Refugee crises spill over. Hostilities spill over. And so God says these two, North and South America, so above their Canada and below South America will become incidental or side sufferers, collateral damage to America's suffering, and that people will be flooding across the borders when the U.S. civil war starts, and it's going to trigger a refugee crisis because millions of people, I'm speaking, but are you picturing this in your mind? Because this is how you get the benefit from these prophecies. Is this just an isolated thing? Well, I'll just listen to her. I'll hear her out, and I'll see what she's saying. Or are you bringing these things home with the understanding of, this is a reality that I will face one day. The Lord may not say to me, you and your family run, but my eyes are surely going to see others running. And at that time, if you are not rooted in the Lord, if the Lord says to you, don't move, I will care for you here. I will protect you here. Or he just says to you, I want you to stay here because for some righteous, your end is going to be here. Your end is going to be here and the Lord may not divulge it to you, but he may simply say to you, abide in the land. And then you're righteous. That means you hear the voice of your father like Noah and you are obedient to what it tells you. And so you stay and you may not know that his plan is to bring you home to rest so that you will not have to be with the rest of us in the Nephilim phase, in the alien phase, in all the other phases that are yet to come. So whatever it is that the Lord will say to you, are you taking these things internally to prepare? Do you even have a passport? A lot of Americans have never seen a U.S. passport. They don't travel. They don't think they need one. That's because the continent is huge and you can spend your whole life visiting places that you've never been. But these are realities. If you wait until the government wakes up to the leakage of people across the border and jacks up the passport price far beyond your pocket, then what? If you have one, are you keeping it current? Are you gathering the wood for the boats, Noah? Or are you being like the townspeople who thought it was ridiculous when he spoke of rain? And so God says, 
that this trickle of immigration, what is that? People with money now going on tourist visas and rolling over the visa. And then when they've had 90 days there, turn it to 120 days and they jump to another country and do the same thing. And so they're living this nomad life. People have also methodically packed up their children, sold their assets and moved out of the country for good. They did not need me to tell that, tell them this. They saw which way the wind in America is blowing and they left. But God says it's going to become a flood. And the only thing I will say to all those who are listening is you don't respond to this type of thing with panic. You respond to this type of thing with prayer and you let the Lord lead. You don't act like a spooked horse and run off and do things and then say, the woman on the internet made me feel that I had to. That is not spiritual responsibility or maturity. So Mexico and Canada will face the same judgment from America because God says they have the same sins, the same immorality. In the prophecy that is called, settle the accounts of men. The Lord says, um, what I saw is I saw America's neighbors crying. In that prophecy, it was a dream. America got herself into trouble by going all around the world, instigating, instigating. And basically she brought calamity upon herself. Somebody in this world, I did not see who, but somebody or several somebodies rose up in this world and struck this nation. And she fell into the calamity of war. And it was not the kind of war that Americans are used to. TV war. They bomb the people in Iraq and then you watch they catch people in the cave in Afghanistan or wherever, and then you watch. No, it was a kind of war that comes home. It was no longer war to go. It was no longer order out war. It was now dine in war. The war came here. And then I saw the nations around the United States, they were crying out to God. They were crying out to God and they were saying, why are we caught in this? Why have we become trapped in this? And the answer came from heaven and told them, because you co-signed her sins, because you're wicked, just like her, because you consented to let, you, you agreed to let her rule over you. And as she ruled over you, you picked up all her homosexuality and all her abortion and her pedophilia and her human sacrifice. You picked up her iniquities and you became just like her. So now that she's at war and she's having trouble, it will spill over and it will be a problem for you as well. That was the dream I had last year. The prophecy is called settle the accounts of men. The next part is the abundance of Babylon will be taken away. I will not allow them to have anything. Individual property ownership is becoming a thing of the past. As the U S government seizes more and more power, they will expand their authority to take possession of private property. Soon it will be, soon it will be that because of rising costs and because of inflation, if people want something, they will have to get, they will have to create partnerships to get it. Soon people will not be able to afford things even with partnerships. Property will become forfeit when owners cannot afford the upkeep on it and they are forced to sell it or give it up to the bank. And one prophecy that is coming to my mind now is called the Iron Gods. The prophecy of the Iron Gods is one of those prophecies that has many sections, just like this one. And one of the sections in the Iron Gods, I basically saw people sitting with tears, trying to hold back tears if they were men, openly weeping if they were the woman, and they were signing over their homes to the bank. Time came in America, paying your mor mortgage was just a pipe dream. Nobody could afford it. Hardly anybody could afford it. And homes began to revert back to the, to the bank and people were broken because some people were almost at the end of finishing what they owe, but because they had gone three, four months and the bank was giving them grace and the math was just not adding up. They simply could not reach the finish line on these purchases. They had to give up homes that they had been living in for such a long time. And I saw families having to go and live in very tiny and cramped apartments. People's lifestyles will change in the United States. It started for some people. It usually starts for people who are already struggling to put their P's and Q's together. People who are already struggling to 
to have something decent in the bank, but that thing will creep up the ladder. Please understand that this is the prophecy channel where the Lord has said that even the rich will struggle. Even the rich will struggle as this economy continues its downward slide to where it is going. It's downward slide while they lie to us and tell us something else through the airways, through the media, through Bloomberg and all the other lying places where they lie, the lies that they lie. People had to give up their homes. People had to give up their property. And God is saying that the government is going to basically enrich itself, empower and expand its authority so much that it's going to start seizing private property. And the first thing that can come to my mind is just farms. This is just what's coming to me right now. Watch out for your farms. Watch out for them claiming that they have need of your land and giving you a petty income and a joke. And then as time goes by and the broker they get, they're simply going to requisition it under some fake new law and give you nothing for it. They're going to tell you, comrade, comrade, you should be proud to give up this farm for the good of the nation. It is for the greater good. We're going to turn it into a park so the children can play and become good citizens of the Reich. And so God is saying that between rising costs, between inflation, between low wages, between economic crisis, if people want stuff in America, they're basically going to start having to form co-ops to get it. Two or three friends having to put money together to get an apartment, two or three friends having to put money together to get a van to cut gas costs or something, get to work. People moving back home with their families, people moving back home with their exes, a man and a woman divorce, and then maintaining two separate households becomes too expensive. And they just decide, you know, we didn't hate that each other that much anyway. Let's live separate lives and just get a two bedroom. And it's good for the kids. Both their parents will be there. People moving back home, people 28, 29, 31, and deciding not to move out of home at all because they do have a job, but they're not making enough to handle rent, much less a mortgage payment. This is shaming. The abundance of Babylon taking away. This is judgment. This is shaming. They will have hunger. They will have wars. They will have international rejection and poverty. Hunger on the way. Wars on the way. Poverty already here. International rejection definitely increasing around the world as we speak. The last part of this prophecy is called no nation will respond. There will be no help for the United States in the day of her calamity. There will be no ally. No one will be willing to help her or step in the line of fire to be a witness for her in the day that the Lord judges her. She will ask for help and not get it. She will send a distress signal and be ignored. This is the payment for sin to have no ally in the day of distress, to find no sympathy and to receive no mercy, for you have also shown no mercy. This is the word of the Lord. And so this part does not need to be explained, really. I've always said here that when America definitely is caught in that war with Russia and China that no nation will be willing to rust to to ruffle Russia's feathers. No nation is going to risk it with Russia as she will be in the last days. That country is going to expand her military might so much and she's going to march across Europe as if it's her backyard with China empowering her. The North Koreans, the South Koreans I still have a prophecy that God has just given me a few days ago that is extremely surprising facts and information about South Korea. The Lord knows everything about these nations. I hope you will remember that there was a time that I said that even nations like Cuba and inside South America, God said that nukes will fly to America from that place. When have you ever heard of any nation in South America being nuke capable? That's not something that we've ever seen disclosed on Google, Bing, Yahoo, nowhere. And yet he said, and I wrote it down and I prophesied it, nukes will fly towards the United States from Cuba and from inside South America. 
I'm not sure if I listed the nations by name, if he told me them by name, or he just said they have nukes in there. And this is something that America is not aware of. So when you hear that there will be no ally, this means that NATO is a farce and a scam. How dangerous it is to put your trust in a farce and a scam. How dangerous it is to think that because you are one of the primary contributors to the United Nations, that when you need help and you put up your hand and you send, as the Holy Spirit is saying here, a distress signal, that distress signal will be ignored. And this will be a likely repercussion for how many times nations needed help and America vetoed the motion for help. This is the payment for sin. You won't have a friend when your day of distress comes. You won't find any sympathy. Please remember that the Lord said that the Arabs will be living their best life when America begins to go into her military difficulties and you will receive no mercy for you have also shown no mercy. This is the word of the Lord. And so I am celestial and this is the master's voice. I think I'm going to add one or two clips to the end of this video. If those clips are not there when the video is uploaded, then I will definitely make sort of a pearl necklace of various clips that support everything that has been spoken in this prophecy. And the reason I will do that is because it's always good to look back. It's good to look back and see what the Lord said, because every word will be established when there are two or three witnesses for it. So I am celestial and this is the master's voice. The master's voice prophecy blog is truly an invaluable resource. It's not because I'm the one who's curating it and managing it for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because it has given so much benefit to all the people who go there. www.the-masters-voice.com. As you read these prophecies, such a different experience from using the videos or even listening to the audios, the audios definitely have a different impact from the visuals. But as you're reading the prophecy for yourself, what you will find is because you don't have an audience there, because there is no community there where people are basically chatting left and right to you, you almost find yourself isolated alone with God. You find yourself alone with God. You find yourself alone with the Holy Spirit, reading the Lord's words. You're reading his reasons. You're coming into communion with his mindset. When you're listening to me, there's so many thoughts that may be flying through your mind. You may be thinking a thousand things. Why? What do I do? I have children. But as you read, you come into what God wants, which is understanding of where God stands. There's no human being that's going to make it in the end times standing aside apart from where God stands. If you're standing apart from where God stands, you're basically standing with the devil and the Lord knows what to do with people who align with even accidentally the devil. This is not the time to be accidentally talking about you support the rights of sex workers. If you're doing that kind of thing, if you're walking in Romans chapter one, verse 32, you're setting yourself up for a fall. You're setting yourself up to be an enemy of the Lord. This is the time, if you don't know the word of God, to get into the word of God. This is the time, if you know the word of God, but there are gaps in your heart. If you have affiliations that are lined up with world, worldly thinking, you know the Bible, but then you're going to one of these rainbow churches, or you're one of these rainbow pastors with a little rainbow thing around your neck in some of these major denominations. This is the time to strongly reconsider whose you are because you're either the Lord's or you're the enemy's. You're either hot or you're cold, lukewarm, an amalgam, a mixture. The Lord will spew you out of his mouth. And so what the Master's Voice Prophecy blog does for you is it creates a space for you to come into the presence of God. And as you read the Lord's words for yourself, trust me, exactly what he said in Haggai that I read for you begins to happen. You begin to consider your ways because you're standing in the blazing presence of God speaking for himself. And I guarantee you, you will be challenged. You will be cut, challenged and cut. These are the first two C's, but there's another C that if you get that one, it's a benefit to you. You will be changed. Challenged, yes. Cut, we must be. 
The circumcision is necessary, but when you are changed, you are becoming fit for the master's use. And heaven gets to be more of more and more of an option every day. I'm Celestial, and this is the master's voice. God bless you, and until I see you again, goodbye. The next part that I saw, please listen, was war in America. I saw people running helter-skelter as war, war came to the Americas. War came. America brought war upon her head. And because of her, her neighbors to the north and to the south began to suffer from the fallout of the magnitude of her errors. Her neighbors lamented and they cried to God. And this is what they said. Why have we come to this, Lord? And the reply came down. Because you consented to the doctrines of the whore of Babylon, you lay down with her, Canada, Mexico, Nicaragua, Chile, Brazil, all of you down there to the bottom. You lay down with her and you accepted her policies. All of you small islands around Grenada and um, St. Lucia and Jamaica and Barbados, all of you around. It says you consented Puerto Rico. You agreed to let the whore of Babylon rule over you. And many of you have your hearts in one accord with the harlot of the revelation. Therefore, her plagues have come upon her. And because you are connected to her in doctrine, because you love her, and because your geological landmass, meaning your physical countries are connected to her, you now feel the heat of my wrath against America, who is my enemy. I saw people running, desperate running. They ran by day, they ran by night, small children even with their parents. And yet in all the tumult and upset, I could not see where all these people were going to. Here is the word, everything is changing. Everything is changing. In a short time, everything will change. The good years are almost done. Two more good years and everything will change. War is coming. War to America, a violent civil war that is already rising. Soon it will break out in the open, a very violent war. Brother will rise against brother and blood will flow in this country. The reasons for war are everywhere already. But in two more years, it will be seen by everyone. Two more good years and then war. America will stand at the precipice of another civil war. Thus says the Lord. So uh, God has been saying since 2020, I think in the middle of the year, two prophecies came, one in July, one in August. One is called war is coming and the other one is called prepare for war. And God was saying that America will surely have a violent civil war, a civil war that blood is going to run in the streets the way we always see it on TV when other people are bleeding from their civil wars, um, their civil conflicts. Um, and it would be a war where people in America would separate based on ideology. So this is why um, it's definitely going to be rooted in politics. It's also going to be rooted in the way the government interacts with the citizens. And so he said that it would be rooted in ideology. That would be the starting point. People would not be able to have civil conversations with one another. People would not be able to find common ground. People would not be able, American will be unable to relate with American until basically people in their hearts will write off huge chunks of people. So racially, Huge chunks of one race will just write off the other race and just be like, well, they're all this and they're all that. And um, gender 
and different types of, um, you see the different wars that we're having uh, in sexuality and things like that, people would find it's not real, but it would seem to people as if there's absolutely no point of commonality. And therefore, when you come to that point where you feel you have no common ground with someone else, then whether that person lives or dies becomes very teeny tiny important to you. And so that's why this war will be so violent because people will literally feel that they are fighting against and eliminating trash. The next part that I saw, please listen, was war in America. I saw people running helter skelter as war, war came to the Americas. War came America brought war upon her head and because of her, her neighbors to the north and to the south began to suffer from the fallout of the magnitude of her errors. Her neighbors lamented and they cried to God and this is what they said. Why have we come to this, Lord? And the reply came down because you consented to the doctrines of the whore of Babylon, you lay down with her, Canada, Mexico, Nicaragua, Chile, Brazil, all of you down there to the bottom. You lay down with her and you accepted her policies. All of you small islands around Grenada and um, St. Lucia and Jamaica and Barbados, all of you around, it says you consented Puerto Rico. You agreed to let the whore of Babylon rule over you. And many of you have your hearts in one accord with the harlot of the revelation. Therefore, her plagues have come upon her. And because you are connected to her in doctrine, because you love her, and because your geological landmass, meaning your physical countries are connected to her, you now feel the heat of my wrath against America, who is my enemy. I saw people running, desperate running. They ran by day, they ran by night small children even with their parents. And yet in all the tumult and upset, I could not see where all these people were going to. And so the whole land lies under the judgment. And this is something that the Lord is constantly bringing to me. Have they never heard of when judgment comes to the land? Why do they not read the word to come into a fuller understanding? In Ezekiel nine, when the judgment came to the land, did the judgment go around and say, well, you know, this class didn't do it? No, the judgment was simply between the righteous and the unrighteous. That was the only standard. That was the only measuring stick. And because it is wrought like that, because it's set up like that, the judgment is out of the hands of men. You can't be judged according to how you feel you should be judged. The only, the only power that you have over judgment is now. It's how you live. It's how you speak. It's what you choose to do with your free time. It's what you do when no one is watching you. That is the only way you affect judgment with what you do now. And then later when judgment comes, you will find out how you did according to the perfect, wise and fair judgment of God. And so the pen said, that some will be driven out to surrounding lands, to all the lands of the earth. And there are live prophecies to that effect. Those with the citizen children, if you are wise, for these are things that I already started to speak to people about in 2015, long before I appeared here, that if you give birth to a child here in the United States and you're just sitting pretty and you don't begin to investigate what that child needs to be able to cross borders, then I hope you're going to cross the border in a canoe or a hot air balloon because these people, weaponized, dressed up, military people with the full rights of the state to arrest, detain, and maybe even take life, they will be at every exit and entry point and you're not crossing out if you are a citizen and you do not have alternative papers from your country of origin 
And that is one of the ways that people will be driven out to surrounding lands. I've said in previous prophecies that some people will go at their own request. They will. I saw visions where people were asking, Americans were asking their own children. It wasn't only people, foreigners who decided, you know what, I'm going to leave. God has long been talking about the exodus of foreigners, that they will sniff the changes in the wind very early and start to quit these high paying jobs and change all their assets into asset things and take with them whatever they can take with them. And then there are other people who will linger and then the times and the pressures will be that you will end up fleeing like that other video I saw where people were just throwing the gold and the silver into SUVs and children documents and they were headed not for the airports, they were headed for the land borders because the government had passed a law that made quite a bit of private property illegal. You couldn't hold it anymore. You couldn't have it anymore. And so people obviously couldn't run with houses. They couldn't run with golf clubs. They ran with small paperwork and they ran with gold and whatever else they had. They ran with what, what money they had and they fled for the borders with their families or by themselves as retirees. That's one way that people will flee into surrounding lands. I have spoken about how the Lord said that in the times to come, in the years to come, South America will not be brown anymore. It will be white because Americans in their millions are going to flee and resettle in those lands. There is another prophecy that if I have time, I will make it, but probably not today. It's called diaspora. And in that prophecy, the Lord was saying that Americans are going to go to the most unheard of destinations. And the Lord was saying that Americans are going to go to Papua New Guinea. He said, Celestial, Americans are going to go to places that if you are looking at holiday destinations and you are looking at retirement spots for them, they would never pick that a hundred out of a hundred. And so he was, he was listing places that Traditionally, you would not even think it, especially in the future times of political tensions and things, you would not even think it's safe for an American to move there. I saw them in Constantinople. I saw them in Istanbul. I saw them in Beirut. And it was a very different type of American that was there. No longer boisterous, no longer noisy, no longer demanding, no longer touristy, very quiet, very humble doing their absolute best to be polite to everyone and assimilate because the times were bitterly different against this nation. And people who had managed to flee with their life and at least some type of funds had learned a very core and pivotal lesson that when God says he will humble you, God will seriously humble you. And so all the lands of the earth um, I have shared that it is not only to Canada and to South America, that Americans will run all the way to Africa and they will even go as far as Asian countries, some people. And then the pen said that you will be removed in judgment to serve your enemies in foreign lands. America, you will go into war. This is a guaranteed fact. You will have at least three years of civil war. God is saying, if any can climb into heaven and change his mind, that is the only way that war will not come. God says that people will hate each other in this country in a manner that foreigners will not understand. So that Japanese person working at the office will simply not understand why on earth the people in the office cannot abide one another, why they are always jockeying for a position, trying to get the other person fired, backbiting. They will be there on their little foreign assignment and wondering what on earth is going on. Why is the office culture like this? God says it is the upwelling of the madness that will eventually spill into civil war. And I see Fox News and CNN riding on the back of this rejected bull, whipping this bull to the last of its life. It is as if this, this, this um, animal that was a cow now appears as a bull and is being ridden to the end of a cliff, to the end of its life and to the end of a cliff. I see end of a cliff 
CNN and Fox News, CNN and Fox News seated on the back of this bull, flogging this animal, flogging this animal. And God says that it will be the media who can be pointed to as the ones that will eventually drive this country into civil war. God says they will magnify every transgression. They will magnify every small thing. They will play it again and again on the news. Any small thing that happens in communities, that happens between different ethnic groups, different racial groups, it happens between the rich and the poor, that happens between the state and the citizens, they will replay it on a loop until people snap and take up arms against one another. I'm seeing my own prophecy on the blog from a few years ago of the two men, the civil war picture that I found after much hunting of the two men pressed up against one another of the two different armies that were here in the civil war pressed up against one another with hatred about to go bullet for bullet it's coming. It is certainly coming. God says an intolerance that you know comes from the spirit realm. It cannot come out of man at this level. This is a spiritual intolerance that will make it impossible for people to accept one another. Blood will flow, not only in America, but in other nations. I said before that I saw war breaking out like a rash. War breaking out like a rash. God says there will be international skirmishes. A skirmish is just when two countries maybe have an eruption. It may be with weapons. It may not be. It may be just a day or two or a week or two of violence and then it just dies down. Or it may be escalate into full out war. God says, have you not read the history books? Do you think that war is a joke? Have you ever heard of displacement of persons? God says that if mercy is shown to you, you will not have war, but what you will have is all the problems that go along with war. Displacement of millions of people. The refugee crisis is coming back to public awareness. The refugee crisis is coming back to this world. The refugee crisis is about to break out more than ever before. This will be an international humanitarian crisis on a scale and on a level that nobody is going to be able to cope with. Nobody has that many spare blankets, he's saying. Nobody has that many cans of food. Nobody has the amount of milk that will be needed for children who no longer have parents. This is for all nations. War is coming to the nations. This is difficult. This is very difficult. I do see the red horse that is riding. I do see the red horse. And this thing is dressed almost as if it's a human being in a military uniform, in a military jacket. It's also dressed like a gorilla, like those rebel soldiers, gorilla soldiers. Lord, I'm seeing so many people leaving this country. I am seeing a mass exodus out of the United States. I am seeing so many people fleeing from this country under dangerous circumstances. I see people going back to their home countries. I see people running to South America who are not even South Americans. And I see the South Americans running back, each of them, to their native land. I see the African people exiting this country with so much speed. I see people taking only their passport and a few clothes trying to take their money out of the bank to leave this country. I see people leaving because of a war that is coming to America. I see a civil war. I see a very brutal war. I see a very dangerous war. I see a war that will be fought between Americans and Americans. I see Americans taking up arms against each other, their own brother, and entering into bloodshed, entering into warfare. I see foreigners do not want to be a part of this brotherly war. Foreigners do not want to die. They do not want to lose their life. God, why are so many people running like this in front of my eyes? I see people just running so desperately, God, across the map. I see them running out of America, completely crossing the sea, even going as far away as Asia. 
I see people just running, running with their feet. I don't even understand how you can run to countries with your feet. You have to take something, a boat, a plane. But I'm just seeing them running, running so much, going back to their own country. God is saying that all of you who have come to this place, did you not know that there is death in this place? You that is coming here to live here and think you are going to grow old here, you are going to go right back to your own country. You are going to go right back to where you came from. Every last one of you, I will scatter you because I have mercy. I will scatter you because you have not taken part in America's sin. You should not pay America's crime and her penalty. You have not participated in her sin, many of you. Therefore, you should not have to pay for her crimes. I will send you home. I'm not going to ask you if you want to go home. You will just find circumstances forcing you to go home. You will just find circumstances forcing you to go back to your own country. You will have no choice. You will have to flee if you want to live. And that is what is going to happen here in America. A brutal civil war, God is saying, at least three years or more. A brutal confrontation based on different views, just like it was in the civil war era. This war will also be fought on vastly different views between one side and another side. And there, people are just going to cut each other here. I'm just seeing people bleeding so much. I'm just seeing blood flowing on the road. Three years of war, minimum three years of civil war. And all the foreigners are going to decide who needs this. I just see foreigners running away. As soon as it starts to get crazy, people are going to get on the plane. Venezuela, I keep seeing this country, Nicaragua. I don't know why I see this country so much. I don't know what is happening there. I don't know what's going on with those people, but I just see lots of Nicaraguans are going to leave America. Lots of people from Panama, I see. Panama, I see Venezuela, I, I see Chile, I see Brazilians leaving here. I see all the French indignant, very frustrated. French people are so uh, frustrated that America has started a war because it means that they cannot keep their investment. The French people are frustrated. They are saying it's a waste of money that they came here. French people are offended that America started a war because they are losing their investments. I see them losing um, investment portfolio. It seems that the French and the British, these two countries, very heavily invested in the United States. These countries have a lot of assets here. Whether, I don't know if it's government assets, but it seems to be individual citizens' assets. And it seems to be the money of the citizens of Europe, French people, British people, um, German people, but the Germans don't really mind. They just go. But the French and the British are very angry, very upset because they have a lot of personal stakes here. I see that they have property. I see that they have boats because I see the harbor. I see the marina. These people have wealth here and they thought they were going to live here for a very long time. And now they have to leave and they cannot take these kinds of assets with them. So all these things are just going to stay here. And the word God is just using for this time time period in American history is perishing. God says all is perishing. Do you not know, Celestial, that all things are passing away, my daughter? Do you not know that all things are perishing? All things are being wasted now because it is the end of time. Whoever has spent their money on foolishness, God is telling you that all the money you spent on foolishness, if you don't go back and try to get that money, you're going to be very sorry. That, that's what the Lord is saying. Whoever has spent their money on foolish things, this is foolish investments, foolish pursuits. You have just been buying all kinds of things, uh, uh, pointless things. I, I'm not sure what it is, like, like a Game Boy, right? So you have spent your money on a Game Boy, a Sony PlayStation, those who are spending hundreds of dollars on shoes and sneakers and things like that, and you're not a millionaire. 
So you are not a millionaire. You don't have that kind of disposable income to just be spending money on foolish things. He calls it frivolities. That's the word that is coming to me. Those who love frivolity, God is saying. Those who love vanity. You just keep going to Hawaii because you can. You just you just keep going there every five minutes instead of, I don't know, putting the money to better use. I'm not sure what that better use will be. God says that if you love these things, you will crash very hard in the future. You will crash very hard and you will lose your shirt. That's what he's saying. You will lose your shirt. You will lose your covering. You will lose your shelter because... Um, what is it, Lord? In the rough times, you did not store up like the ant, but you spent everything that you had. I see a man who is sitting at the gambling table, and all this man is saying is just bet it all. Bet it all. Bet it all. He just keeps going. Everything on red. Everything on black. Well, God says, because you've been playing this kind of reckless game with your finances, when the economy crashes and tanks, in about 28 to 48 hours when everything just goes down like that you're just going to see the economy going down like that in a 28 or 48 hour period one minute everything will be fine the next minute everything will just be crash crash um standard and pours will crash you know the dow jones everything the footsie um the london index all of them i don't know their names they're just going to be going down like dominoes even the japanese economy is going to be shuddering when this is happening but it's not really going to to destroy that country they're, they're not really going to feel the heat of the volcano the financial volcano the financial destruction that America and Europe are going to feel when the money crashes. So God is just saying, this is not related to the civil war, but he is just saying that you that just plays with your money and buys foolish things, frivolities, he says, pointless things, you will find it very difficult in the day that the market contracts. That's what I see. I see something like a crab, right? So you know a crab, the crab will just put out the legs. And then all of a sudden, I just see the crab pull back. So the crab just pulls back, just the way a turtle has the legs out and then the turtle just pulls the legs in. That's how the market is going to contract. It's just going to pull in like that suddenly and everything will just be pulled off the table and people will, God says you will just go naked. It's gonna be worse than losing your shirt. You will be absolutely naked. Some people are just not gonna be able to handle it. People are going to have horrible breakdowns terrible terrible responses to becoming poor in one hour that is the prophecy that god gave me so long ago and he's still saying it in one hour in one hour america will become unrecognizable and everyone who does things the way she does things whether it is in your personal life or whether it is another country that keeps trying to copy america's economy copy america's society copy america's cultural norms you who are wearing dresses in your country and you're a man and you never used to wear dresses but because you see Americans, American males are wearing dresses. You think it's okay and you are not wearing dresses. When this happens, it is a spiritual response to God's judgment. God says he will cut off the limbs, hack them off. Ta, ta, ta. Bloody arms falling off of this nation. And that's just toxic shock. When somebody cuts off one of your limbs, just cuts off one finger, you can go into toxic shock. So just imagine somebody cutting off all your arms, all your legs at the same time. It's a death sentence. It's a death sentence. Lord, you are good. You are just and you are very faithful and you tell no lies. The truth is with you always, Elohim. You are so wonderful. And these are just your words. These are just the revelations, Almighty God. Thank you. I will, I will pray about my own things at another time. I will bring my own prayer requests at another time.